live look right now at the Notre Dame Seminary, where the funeral cortege is about to get started, which will take the body of former Archbishop Philip Matthew Hannon to his final resting place at the St. Louis Cathedral in historic Jackson Square. Good afternoon, I'm Norman Robinson, and this is our special coverage, remembering Archbishop Hannon. It is the third day in mourning for one of the most revered figures in the history of New Orleans, the man who led the New Orleans Archdiocese for more than two decades. This afternoon, we'll show you the funeral procession from several vantage points, beginning at the Notre Dame Seminary on Carrollton Avenue, as it turns onto Canal Street in Mid-City, and as it arrives at historic St. Louis Cathedral in the French Quarter. We are also giving you an exclusive live look at the procession as it travels from the seminary uptown all the way downtown to the cathedral in the French Quarter. Thousands of people, including students from Catholic schools throughout the region, are expected to line the route to pay their respects as the horse-drawn carriage goes by carrying the body of former Archbishop Philip Hannon. WDSU, by the way, is the only station to have a live camera included in the cortege, which will give you a unique perspective of the procession and the many people turning out to pay tribute as the Archbishop makes his final passage through his beloved city. The procession is led by a phalanx of law enforcement from around the metro area, followed by the famous St. Augustine High School Marching 100, which precedes the horse-drawn carriage carrying the archbishop's body. The archbishop, during his episcopy, was a symbolic godfather to many of the young men at St. Aug. Behind the hearse, Archbishop Gregory Amon, Bishop Shelton Fabre, and some younger members of the Hannon family are walking the route. Behind them, older members of the Hannon family are riding in a vehicle. And behind them, older clergy members are also riding in a vehicle. This is a look at the route. The funeral procession will leave the Notre Dame Seminary, travel down Carrollton Avenue to Canal Street, turn right, and then travel down to Charters. It will take a left at Charters and end at the St. Louis Cathedral. Right now, we want to take you out to the seminary where WDSU reporter Gina Swanson is standing by. Gina? Absolutely, Norman. You can actually see the processional just uh, starting to move past us. There was an honorary, an honor guard from the 82nd Airborne. We do know that Archbishop Philip Hayden was a member. You can see now the St. Augustine marching band uh, just moving up, moving up the processional. Archbishop Philip Hayden was actually just loaded into this antique horse-drawn casket that will take him on his final trip through the streets of the city that he loved. We can see that coming out, falling out of the seminary right now, we do see a contingent of the clergy and different priests. We also uh, have uh, somewhat of a New Orleans fixture, a second line tribute to New Orleans uh, on his way out for Archbishop Philip, ha Philip Hannon. This morning certainly has been a flurry of activity. People got a last opportunity to pay their respects to Archbishop Hannon. We talked to a number of people on their way in. You know, we asked him why did they decide to come out. So some people tell us it's more, they came out more than once. One lady told us, you know, she brought her rosary out. She had come out before, but then she came back with her rosary because she said that she wanted her rosary to touch his hand because of all the good works that he had done in the community. She believes that one day he will be a saint. Other people just tell us, you know, New Orleans knows how to pay respect for people who have made a big difference in the city. Some people, not even Catholic, just saying because he was such a great man and everything that he did for the city uh, that they decided to come and pay their respects. Now, this is the 11th tribute to the 11th Archbishop of the city of New Orleans, of, of the New Orleans Archdiocese. We know that he passed on September 29th, 46 years to the day where he received that appointment, served us dutifully for 23 years. We do know that uh, he retired in December of 1988. Uh, just one of the things that he loved about the city, as you can see right in front of me, the St. Augustine Band. He said, you know, he was at the funeral of legendary band director Ed Hampton. He said at that point that, you know, he loves his parades, but when St. Augustine passes, that the parade is over. So this is certainly a fitting tribute. We'll bring you more sights and sounds from everything happening out here. But that's the latest for now, Norman. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Gina. Stand by. We'll be talking to you a little later in this broadcast. Meantime, here's a list of the songs the St. Augustine Marching 100 will play as they lead the procession from the Notre Dame Seminary to the St. Louis Cathedral. Lord, you are good. Let the praise begin. Oh, happy day, someday, and never can 
say goodbye. And this is a live look at the uh, corner of uh, Carrollton Avenue and Canal Street. The procession will turn right onto Canal and head down to Charter Street. Students from Jesuit High School, which is right down Carrollton, will line the route along with hundreds of other Catholic school students from 75 different Catholic schools across the region. I say hundreds, thousands, 7,000 students, in fact, are expected. WDSU News anchor Rachel Wolf is live outside of the cathedral. Let's check in with her now. Rachel? I'm having a little bit of a hard time hearing you, but there are lots of different tourists milling about the area right now, asking lots of questions. What's going on? What will be happening here? Of course, this is where that procession is going to be ending up. We're here at St. Louis Cathedral. If you take a look here behind me, absolutely gorgeous day. We have the police that have cordoned off this area. This is where the body will actually be taken inside. Of course, Archbishop Hannon will be entombed at St. Louis Cathedral. There will be visitation here tonight and into tomorrow before that actual funeral starts. And and this area is going to be right here where everybody will be leaving. Of course, you heard about all the different people that will be walking, including Archbishop Gregory Amen. We've got members of the Hannon family. We also have all sorts of other dignitaries and leaders within the Catholic Church. So we're expecting right between 3.30 and 4 o'clock that this area will be filled with people. It's about a four and a half mile route. So again, they're expected to take about till about 3.30 or 4 o'clock before they get here. So at this point in time, we're just ready, waiting. A lot of people want to take pictures and be a part of this very auspicious occasion. Live on your side from Jackson Square, Rachel Wolf, WDSU. Back to you, Norman. Thank you, Rachel. And here's a live look inside the St. Louis Cathedral where people are filing in. Once the Archbishop's body arrives at the cathedral, the public visitation will continue until 9 p.m. tonight and then again tomorrow morning from 9 a.m. until noon. The funeral mass will begin tomorrow at 2 p.m. The Archbishop's body, as Rachel just told you, should arrive at the cathedral around 4 or 4.30. Visitation will happen until 9 tonight. And again, he will lie in repose tomorrow for another another public visitation from 9 a.m. until noon at the cathedral. And tomorrow, the Archbishop will be laid to rest at the cathedral. The funeral mass begins at 2 p.m. We'll bring you live coverage right here on WDSU. Now back to Gina Swanson, who's covering the beginning of the cortege at um, the historic Notre Dame Seminary. Gina, so far, the uh, cortege is underway with the St. Augustine High School marching band leading this uh, procession. This is a historic moment in the city of New Orleans, the likes of which hasn't been seen in 47 years since the last archbishop was um, laid to rest. What's different about this particular cortege as compared to the last time an archbishop was laid to rest in the city of New Orleans? Well, Norman, what I can tell you is that the St. Augustine Band is the only band that is in this cortege, and all of these uh, Catholic school students actually lining uh, the route. Here we are next to some young, young ladies from Dominican High School. We also uh, saw hundreds of kids from this Archbishop Hannon's namesake school. They came out. They actually sung the school song in his honor. You can see that this processional is certainly moving along. You can see uh, the police escorts, and coming up here shortly, uh, hopefully coming coming into view is actually the casket that is carrying Archbishop Philip Hannon, certainly beloved uh, in this community. Uh, people have been coming out, lining the streets in this area for hours now. When we first got here, people were getting here, claiming their spots because they wanted to be part of this history-making moment, and you can certainly feel the magnitude, the gravity of the moment. While Archbishop Hannon served us dutifully, a lot of people say, you know, 98 years old was certainly a good life and that, you know, he will certainly be welcome into the pearly gates. Uh, Charbonnet Funeral Home actually uh, is responsible for this antique casket that will carry him. Just a si another signature moment, something uniquely New Orleans, just the little touches that Archbishop Philip Hannon would have wanted in a homegoing service for him, Norman. Gina, this particular service kind of relates to the relationship that the Archbishop had with the citizens of New Orleans. He came here in October of 1965 and immediately embraced the city and its culture. And I understand that the um, current Archbishop, Gregory Amon, wanted to make sure that that culture was captured with this particular ceremony as it relates to not only to the St. Augustine High School Marching Band, but as it relates to this 18th century horse-drawn horse um, hearse. 
Absolutely, Norman. He came here just about 20 days after Hurricane Betsy in 1965. The city still in ruins, but he immediately got to work and not just did work on behalf of Catholics. He actually worked for everyone in the community, which is something that uh, some of the mourners pointed out, some of the people who came out to, to wish him well. As I mentioned, it's some of the little New Orleans touches because we know that he wasn't born in New Orleans, but he certainly considered himself a New Orleanian. We actually have a, a, a person, a second line a member, if you will, in this procession as well. Certainly all the touches the Archbishop would have liked. Here at the seminary, you can hear uh, the St. Augustine Band is actually uh, getting ready to start playing um, their first number. You know, don't expect any somber tunes out of them today. That is not what the Archbishop would have wanted. He was an upbeat and lively person, and so Archbishop Gregory Amen requested that the music be upbeat and lively uh, in tribute to him, Norman. And Gina, when the band starts playing, let's see if we can capture some of the sound of their tribute to this uh, this great man, this man who um, embraced the city of New Orleans and was in turn embraced by all of its citizens. If it can be said, or if it's proper to be said, he was more than just an archbishop. He was a community leader who was loved by all Catholic and non-Catholic, was he not? Certainly proper to be said. I mean, a lot of the work that he started with Catholic Charities was because he wanted to work across all racial, cultural, and religious lines. That's uh, why uh, Archbishop Hannon is and so beloved here. So many people of different walks of life coming out to pay tribute. We even have a contingent from the Vietnamese community here because he embraced them. And as you can see, his carriage is passing by us right now. Archbishop Hannon, the 11th Archbishop of the Archdiocese of New Orleans, passing by right now. You can see some people actually offered applause, taking pictures here. Uh, just certainly a momentous occasion to pay tribute to him, Norman. Gina, thank you. And the applause are considered appropriate because this, even though it's a somber occasion, it is not a sad occasion. This we is a cannot. celebration of a man or for a man who in fact uh, lived his life to the fullest, who enjoyed his life, who showed others around him how to live and not only as Archbishop Gregory Amon said several days ago showed us how to grow old gracefully and how to how to die graciously um, a man who um, made his stripes by serving others and doing that service uh, with a smile on his face always uh, you can see some of the uh, younger members of the uh, Archbishop's family now walking by behind the hearse. This trip down to um, St. Louis Cathedral, by the way, from the seminary is four and a half miles long. So the younger members will walk and um, the older members of the Archbishop's family will, um, will ride in limousines. And these are some of the, uh, the priests who uh, participated in the um, in the uh, final mass at the seminary this morning. This is an exclusive look from our Go Live camera, which is uh, leading the procession. Um, it is directly in front of the, um, the mounted police from the New Orleans uh, Police Department, uh, and which is directly in front of the horse-drawn hearse. Um, this will be the visage that you can see all the way down to um, Canal Street. Uh, down to Charter Street as the procession makes its way to historic St. Louis Cathedral. The students lined up al along the um, procession route are members of uh, some 75 Catholic schools, not just uh, representing the New Orleans area, but uh, areas from Laplace Reserve, um, St. Bernard throughout the area, and in and, and, and particularly a school uh, that was named after the Archbishop, um, Archbishop Hannon High from the North Shore. Um, many, some 350 of its students were bused in to uh, line the, um, the cortege route and pay their last respects to um, their beloved namesake. This um, Absolutely. is an incredible visage, uh, Gina. This is, uh, this is something we that perhaps people will note from, for, for many years to come. 
Absolutely, Norman, but you know, beyond uh, high school students, we should also mention that students at Xavier University will be lining the route as well. Uh, we actually talked to one of the Xavier faculty members who said that, you know, this is a man who brought the Pope to Xavier University. How can we not pay tribute to that? Now uh, we can see that people along the procession are starting to shift here a little bit from the seminary uh, to Carrollton Avenue as the procession makes its way. But beyond Archbishop Hannon's family, we also had a contingent from Catholic Charities. We know many of the programs that Catholic Charities operated started in the 23 years when Philip Hayden was the Archbishop here. So not just for Catholics, but for all people, especially the elderly and the poor, people always remember that he had a big heart and a heart of service. And so everybody took, uh, lots of people took the time out of their day to come out and tribute. Now in these limousine buses here, we do have some of the elder members of the clergy and some of the elder members of the Hayden family who were up uh, to make the walk. Uh, this is the end of the procession here, but uh, certainly the events are carrying on on Carrollton Avenue. We're going to see if we can uh, check in with some people just to kind of give us their thoughts about uh, why they came out. Would you care to talk to us about why you came out? Okay, no problem, but we do have a lot of people out here uh, who earlier shared their thoughts on Archbishop Hannon, just telling us that that they thought uh, it was worth it to come out to take a time out. Some people took their time out from work just to have this moment here and pay their respects, Norman. And Gina, how, how many people are in that particular cortege? Did, were you able to, um, to, to, to count or make an estimate of the number of pe people walking along and riding along with the uh, procession? <laughs> I will tell you this, just the marching band alone, we have 180 members of clergy. We have dozens more. I would give it in the range probably of about 300 people in the cortege making this journey, uh, the last journey with Archbishop Philip Hayden through the streets of the city that he loved so dearly, Norman. And I was talking to uh, some members of the um, Ancient Order of Hibernians. Uh, as we continue to look at the procession, this is a procession from our exclusive live camera that is mounted to a vehicle in the procession. And uh, as you can see, the procession is making its way down Carrollton Avenue past that, uh, that, uh, that shell station where some um, 200 to 300 um, college students uh, or Catholic school students have been stationed to pay their respects to the uh, former Archbishop, the, uh, the um, Immaculate Conception School, is 60 kids there, Our Lady of Prompt Sucker School from the West Bank, there are 40 kids there, St. Anthony School from Gretna has about 60 kids there, and St. Cletus School, 60 kids, and, and the uh, Visitation of Our Lady School is represented by some 120 students. The crowd is very somber, and occasional applause uh, as they pay tribute to the man who called New Orleans home for 46 years. He came here uh, from Washington, D.C. in October uh, 1965. Um, he made New Orleans his home, and he embraced the people of the city of New Orleans, immediately jumping in to help out where he could. He arrived shortly after Hurricane Betsy has, had devastated the city. And of course, he was here through the devastation of Hurricane Katrina, no longer Archbishop, but made it a point to lend a hand where he could. Um, people who have have befriended him, have talked about his uh, selflessness, uh, his unselfish service, his willingness to uh, to go above and beyond whatever was needed. These are students filing into St. Louis Cathedral where the uh, Archbishop will be laid to rest um, tomorrow uh, during a Mass at 2 p.m. His body is scheduled to arrive there as the cortege enters historic Jackson Square sometime around 3.30 and 4 p.m. this evening. Now, we are told that uh, about a thousand people are expected to attend the Mass tomorrow at St. Louis Cathedral. There will be an overflow crowd, um, and because of that, there will be a giant screen television so that uh, people outside will be able to see the uh, Mass as it's being conducted from um, inside. We will also be covering that, that, um, that service for you live. The uh, mounted police are leading the way as the cortege heads down uh, Carrollton Avenue for its four and a half mile trip to historic St. Louis Cathedral. I was talking earlier doing mass today. They had a final mass at the seminary. I was talking to some of the people in attendance, and among them was the uh, members of the Ancient Order of Hibernians in Louisiana. Division One, by the way, um, was named for 
uh, Archbishop Philip Hannon, and they traced their origins to the uh, immigrants who came to New Orleans between 1847 and 1853. Archbishop Hannon uh, is known to have uh, frequented many of their, um, their parades on St. Patrick's Day. He was a man who was uh, about um, serving the people. Uh, there's an old saying that uh, many people are called but only a few are chosen. He was certainly a chosen leader who understood his mission and made it a point to uh, reach out to people ac across cultural, um, social, economic, and um, racial lines. He was a, um, a humanitarian uh, through and through, never once uh, did you see him without a, a smile on his face? Even when he was angered, he always looked for clarity and, and understanding. Never was a, a person who, who ducked or shunned controversy or, or tried to, um, to avoid um, a controversy. He was always willing to engage you in any kind of conversation as long as it was constructive. Gina Swanson is standing by with, with one of the um, the parade witnesses or or pro procession witnesses, people who came out to uh, pay their last respects to the Archbishop. Gina? Absolutely, Norman. Things have cleared out a little bit, but one of the people we found still here. Uh, tell us your name, ma'am. My name is Patricia Donis. Miss Patricia Donis, you know, one of the people just lining the route to the processional. Tell us why it was so important for you to come out today. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. If I could be here, I was going to be here. And we love the bishop, Bishop Hannum. He, he loved uh, New Orleans, and we love him back, and we wanted to give him a good send-off. Do you have any memories of Archbishop Hayden that you would like to share? Any thoughts? Oh, well, many years ago, when I was growing up in Vasher, Louisiana, he came out to St. Philip's Catholic Church and he confirmed me and my sister Judy and my brother Daniel all on the same day. And, um, and when I graduated from Dominican College, he was there and he handed me my diploma. Mm -hmm. He was certainly uh, beloved in this community. Many people characterize the day as bittersweet. Would you uh, share that characterization? Um, I know when he first came here, it was during Hurricane Betsy. I was living in Vashry then, but uh, uh, from what I understand, he just stepped right into it and gathered up the seminarians, was out there filling up sandbags, and he was just hands-on. He, he, I think he did a lot of good. And so when did you make the decision that you were coming in from Vashery? Oh, I've been living in New Orleans for, for okay. several years, but I, I grew up there until I was about 15 years and, and went to school in, in Thibodeau. Okay. All right, thank you. We certainly appreciate you talking to us. Norman, just one of the many stories people have of Archbishop Philip Hannon. We actually talked with someone earlier today who told us that he was an educator, that Archbishop Hannon actually ordained him as a deacon, but he had a conversation with him saying that he didn't feel like he was fulfilling his ministry. He said Archbishop Hannon sat him down and said, you teach children, right? You have employees, you have teachers. That is your ministry. So no matter whatever your station in life, this person was telling us that Archbishop Hannon uh, was a, had a way of just encouraging you. Even though this person said he didn't feel like he was doing uh, as much as he could in church, he felt like uh, what he was doing in education was his service to this community. So just a lot of nice uh, vignettes, stories we hear about Archbishop Hannon that we've been hearing throughout the morning, Norman. No question about the fact that the man was a friend to, uh, to everyone, and his primary mission was to uh, serve humanity, and that he did by leading and by setting an example. This is a picture of uh, Canal and um, Carrollton, where the people are waiting for the arrival of the uh, Cortez. As you can see, there's a, there's a large number of people who are waiting to see the Archbishop. We talked about the number of, of uh, high school kids and middle school kids and elementary school kids who were, were let out of school today so that they could participate in the, uh, in, in the Cortez. Um, but there are a number of just everyday people who are, are joining them uh, along the procession route to, uh, to pay their respects to a man who, who reached across all boundaries, uh, a man who was, who was no stranger to just about anyone in the, in the city of New Orleans, not just the city of New Orleans, but throughout the entire metro area. The man was well known and well loved, and he was a priest's priest. In fact, Gina, Gina Swanson is standing by with a, with a priest who has some fond memories of the Archbishop. Gina? 
Absolutely, Norman. One of the a member of the clergy is still out here. Uh, we just want to ask you very quickly. First of all, tell introduce us. What's your name, sir? My name is uh, Father Min Phan. I'm a uh, 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 Vietnamese. I was ordained in 1997. And I work here at uh, Notre Dame Seminary. Could you tell us uh, just your thoughts on Archbishop Hayden and his legacy and his work in this community? First of all, as a Vietnamese, he's uh, a wonderful father to us. In 1975, the Vietnamese people uh, found their place here in, in New Orleans. And Archbishop uh, Hannon was uh, one of the first ones uh, and officially welcomed all the Vietnamese people starting a new life here in, in the city of New Orleans and in the Archdiocese of New Orleans. And you said uh, he definitely was a, a, a father to you guys, but talk about uh, his, just his service in the community. I know you work here at the seminary. You hear a lot of stories about Archbishop Hannon. Could you share uh, something with us? Maybe perhaps people don't know. For many years, he lived at uh, that building and uh, uh, commune with us with uh, meal every day. Um, and uh, share with us so many activity every time we get uh, we gather here at the seminary and you know young people would love to look up to uh, uh, the archbishop for him to share the journey of the priesthood um, the, the sacrifice that they would share in their life and uh, archbishop Hannon was always there with us sharing simple meal with us day in watching football game with us <laughs> And sometimes he's on the other side, and we're on the other side, and we cheer each other up, and he really joined us. And I remember in 1997, he was um, uh, very sick at time, and uh, it might turn to be ordained uh, to the priesthood at the cathedral where he's going right now. And uh, he wasn't feeling well, and yet he accepted my invitation to be there for us. And that, those are the wonderful memories, and I'm sure there are many other memories that, that has been highlighted the last few days, how he, how he spent time with us uh, during uh, Hurricane Katrina, and then 40 years earlier with uh, uh, Katrina, with uh, Hurricane Betsy, and he's always there for us. All right. Thank you, Father, for those sentiments. Uh, definitely someone who can give us insight uh, as Archbishop Hayden served as a mentor to those on their journey in the priesthood. Like I said, just a wonderful mix of different thoughts and memories out here. Uh, all these people just paying their final respects to a man that's so beloved in this community, Norman. No question about it, Gina, and I'm reminded of one of my favorite poems by uh, John Donne, the uh, 16th century poet, who said that each man's death diminishes me, for I'm involved in mankind. Therefore, never ask for whom the bell tolls, the bell tolls for thee. Wherever the bell tolled, um, Archbishop Philip Hannon was there to answer it. Uh, there you had a perfect example of the priest that uh, Gina just interviewed. Um, that uh, It was 1975, as the priest just told us, that... Uh, Archbishop Hannon reached out to the Vietnamese community. I, he took a trip to a refugee camp in um, Arkansas the, where he found deplorable, squalid conditions. And he took it upon himself to answer that bell. The bell rang and tolled for the people who were suffering um, incalculable indignation uh, in that refugee camp. And he sought to bring them to, um, to the New Orleans area. Um, it was a practical reason, and there you have a picture of the Archbishop in his final years there. Uh, he never stopped serving. But it was a practical uh, matter. The man, he, he once um, described Pope John Paul as intellectual and pastoral. I think that that somehow fits a description or characterization of, uh, of Archbishop Hannon, because wherever he found... Um, injustice or strife or struggle, he tried to write it, and he, he recognized that in that refugee camp in Arkansas. And he was instrumental in bringing and relocating those Vietnamese refugees here to New Orleans where they flourished. As you know, the Village de l'Est, the Vietnamese community, there's the largest Vietnamese community um, in, the, uh, in the country, in the United States. And they flourished here because they were fishermen in their um, in their mother country of Vietnam, and and the Archbishop saw that, and put the two cultures together, and uh, they became quite a success. And he is remembered, and he is remembered for that. That's just one of the many examples uh, of his of his compassion and his reaching out to uh, to help lift up humanity. Let's go back to Gina Swanson now, who has another priest for an interview. Gina. 
Absolutely, Norman. We just heard one uh, priest tell us about Archbishop Hand and how he was a mentor. We have another member of the clergy here. Introduce yourself to us. Hi, I'm Father Kenneth Michels from the Diocese of Alexandria. From the Diocese of Alexandria. So uh, tell us about Archbishop Philip Hannon's legacy to you, if you had to uh, just share some words about him. I, I would. The word that came to mind as I was standing here was, was triumph. The triumph of the church, the triumph of Catholicism, and the triumph of a life well lived. I think this was a very fitting way to send him to his eternal reward. And I'm very happy to have been here to partake of it. And I'm happy for so many people in New Orleans to have been here and to have given, uh, shown their appreciation and being able to witness a life so wonderfully lived in service to his Lord. And when you say wonderfully lived, 98 years old is certainly a long life. There was a bit of sadness earlier this morning, but uh, the Archbishop Gregory Amon asked the band to keep things upbeat for someone uh, so loudly. Was this a fitting tribute, you would say? It certainly was. And, you know, as a priest and as a bishop, you know, fortunately, we do not leave behind children to mourn us or a wife to mourn us. So it is the people... Uh, coming out to show their generosity and their appreciation for the years of service and that's a happy thing uh, that, that that's a happy moment so yeah there is sadness of course because we miss the person but there's so much to be happy about in a life lived so triumphantly and last question for you I know you came in from Alexandria not too far away but I mean Archbishop Hannon's legacy certainly was far-reaching beyond New Orleans beyond uh, Louisiana even is that the case yes he, he, he was the Archbishop when I was here at the seminary and um, having recently read his book, and, and uh, I actually gave her an overview of it to a group of Catholics in Alexandria, his impact was so, so was felt all over the world, really, from, as his, the title of his book says, from uh, uh, combat to Camelot uh, to Katrina. Uh, 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 throughout his life, wherever he was, he was a giant of a man, and, and you knew he was there, and he made a difference in people's lives. And I suppose you could sum it up by saying, uh, out of that m marvelous life and that life so well lived, he saved the most momentous thing that happened to him. He saved for the last page of the last chapter of his book. And he related an incident in World War II when he was in occupied Berlin two days uh, uh, after it fell. And a woman, middle aged, was pulling her, her cart with her son in it and she was weeping and crying and he tried to console her. And, but she could not be consoled and finally she said, I can, you cannot help me because there's no one left to love me. My husband is dead. There's no one left to love me. And he said that's what it's all about in the end, Wh whom we have loved and those that have loved us. Thank you, Father, for those words. What, uh, what a wonderful uh, sentiment uh, to share about Archbishop Philip Hannon. We know yesterday the former Archbishop Alfred Hughes said that this was a man larger than life, and that certainly was evident by the amount of people that came out to pay tribute today, Norman. Gina, um, and to, uh, to quote the, uh, the, the late Archbishop who once said, um, it's not a person's degrees that matter in life that are important, it's how they live their life. And, and I think that not only did he talk the talk, he walked the walk, he, he led by, by example. And there was nothing that was too small for him to do if it was picking up trash, that's exactly what he did. Um, if it was um, just lending a hand at a service or filling in for someone who was sick, he was never too important to do that. You are continuing to look at the uh, cortege. This is a live look at the cortege, which is almost to Tulane Avenue. As you know, the cortege left the seminary. It's on its way up to um, Canal Street, where it will make a right turn um, and end up at the um, St. Louis Cathedral, which is where WDSU anchor Rachel Wolf is standing by waiting its arrival. Rachel? Yes, Norman, actually, we have a helicopter overhead. We're not sure if they're taking pictures, videotaping or not. Lots of people coming up, taking lots of pictures. Of course, Jackson Square is where many folks come when they come to New Orleans and they want to capture the essence of the city. Well, today, this is really celebrating an icon, a great man in New Orleans history who loved New Orleans as much as New Orleans loved him. And in about an hour and a half, he's expected to arrive here at St. Louis Cathedral. Now, here's some interesting information. Eleven other bishops are actually buried inside St. Louis Cathedral. 
We're told by the Archdiocese that Archbishop Philip Hannon will be the 12th. He will be buried under the altar in the back towards the right. And after he is buried here on Thursday, there will be four more spots available to bury people here at St. Louis Cathedral. So again, um, a lot of people just really loving him and wanting to come down and, and be a part of what's happening here today. Some folks saying, oh, it's going to happen in about an hour and a half, and they're going and doing something and coming back. You know, uh, we have talked about who's going to be here today. There's groups of, uh, of, of Catholic school children that are coming up to St. Louis Cathedral, taking their pictures, again, wanting to be a part of this. Some of them actually uh, lining the streets, we know, as part of this procession here today. We know Archbishop Gregory Amond is in that procession, many different Catholic officials and leaders and many different dignitaries who will be coming down here today. And uh, on Monday, I had the chance to talk with Archbishop Gregory Amond, and, and he said that Archbishop Philip Hannum was just such a mentor to him, such a father figure, and he felt such a loss. And he said that it was really something that it hit him very hard, actually, on Monday. And he, he was joking and having, uh, remembering fond stories and fond memories of him. And one of the things he said that he learned, he said, I always felt uncomfortable asking for money, but with Archbishop Philip Hannon, he said, how do you do that? How do you do that? And Archbishop Hannon said, well, I'm not asking for me, meaning like it's for the people. So he said he was fearless and he was a, a great shepherd of the people. And I think that outpouring of support is really going to be seen here today. We're expecting a lot of folks to be arriving here in the next hour and a half, Norman. Yeah, Rachel, and in fact, he, he was fearless, and I think his, his fearlessness was forged in his service, especially during World War II when he was a, um, a parachute jumper in the 82nd Airborne with the United right. States Army. And I, and I think it was that experience that helped forge not only his fearlessness, but, but to a degree, his, his uh, worldwide humanity. He was, he, was, he was comfortable wherever he was, whether, whether it was at uh, just a neighborhood picnic or whether he was on stage with, uh, with world leaders, don't you think? I would think so, and actually when he was doing his paratrooper training in the military, he did his required number of jumps, and the service actually recognized he was a leader and made him a trainer of other men. Uh, and so I think people recognized that leadership capability very early on. It was obviously apparent as he rose through the ranks of the Catholic Church, um, and people here recognize that as well. You know, people in New Orleans love people, and Archbishop Philip Hannon, he was the same way. He embraced everyone, and, and when we talk about being fearless, our, Archbishop Amond was saying that he was fearless when it came to the gospel, and he always felt that if it was from the gospel, if whatever it was, um, a service or a community event or any sort of um, guidance, he prayed on it and he felt if it was truly from the gospel that it was meant to be, and he would forge forth even if other people didn't always agree with him. And that is, again, one of the signs of being a great leader. And so many people here coming on Monday's public visitation when I had the chance to do that at Notre Dame Seminary, just weeping and saying, this man was a part of my life. He served 46 years with the Catholic Church. This is a tremendous moment in our city's history, a, a passing uh, that is really, really monumental, a changing of the guard, even though we already have Archbishop Gregory Amond. We know that Archbishop Philip Hammond was really Archbishop Emeritus, if you will, and was really, really involved until just a few years ago when his health started to fail, Norman. And, and Rachel, as, as you're talking, we're, we're watching the court make its way up Canal Street under the um, the Punchy Train Expressway overpass. This is exclusive live footage from a WDSU live camera which is uh, mounted to a vehicle in the uh, cortege. Um, and they're making their way past Tulane Avenue. They're now several blocks from Canal Street where they will make a right turn. And as you were saying about the relationship between um, Archbishop Gregory Amon and former Archbishop Philip Hannon, Rachel, um, as you know, Archbishop Hannon was Gregory Amon's mentor who ordained Absolutely. him. And so I Absolutely. see that as an extension perhaps, and I think that the, the Archbishop himself sees himself as an extension of the, of, of the efficacy of, um, of former Archbishop uh, Philip, Philip Hannon, because they, he, he they both does. believe, they both have, share the same philosophy of, of human service. They do, they do, and uh, you know, that legend, that um, iconic role is uh, really, really 
you'll see that, I think, in his speech. And I don't want to give away too many things, but Archbishop Amen had told us some of the, the private memories that he had of him, uh, of Archbishop Hannon, and he was sharing that with some of the reporters. And as he was sharing those thoughts with us, he said, that's a little, that's a little memento I'm going to bring to the masses on Thursday. Let me just tell you right now that this is a really momentous occasion for many reasons. Um, the last funeral for an archbishop was in 1965. That was Archbishop Rummel. And at that time, 7,000 Catholic school children actually lined the streets in New Orleans when he had his funeral procession. Um, that's a lot, of, a lot of children, and I think we're going to see some of that today. Um, again, visitation, once Archbishop Hannon's body arrives here, there will be public visitation until 9 o'clock tonight. There will also be public visitation from 9 till noon tomorrow. And then, of course, we will have the funeral mass, and there will be seating here in Jackson Square. So that's the latest, Norman, from Jackson Square. We'll keep on our toes, and we'll keep you aware of what's going on and let you know as soon as it starts arriving in this area. And thank you very much, Rachel. And as, uh, and as we continue to watch the, the procession move up Carrollton Avenue, past Tulane Avenue now, you can see the uh, Pontchartrain Expressway in the background, which means they are near Canal Street where they will be ma making a right turn. Gina Swanson is standing by with one of the parade or one of the processional um, spectators. Gina? Absolutely, Norman. Talk about the impact of Archbishop Philip Hannon. We have with us Jim and Mary Kane. They're here from Los Angeles. They were here for a planned tri plan trip, but they decided to come in a little bit earlier just to bear witness to this. Uh, Jim, tell us why you thought it was important to come out today. Well, yeah, they think Archbishop Hannon is uh, intertwined with New Orleans, and there's no place like New Orleans that embraces someone, and in turn, he embraced New Orleans back. Mm -hmm. And, and Miss Mary, what would you say your sentiments are on the Archbishop? Well, we heard about him, and we heard the impact he's had in the in the area. And I've not been to uh, a funeral since I was a very young child in New York, where I'm from, for the funeral of Cardinal Archbishop Spellman. And this, I knew, would be incredibly spiritual, and it was, to see everyone come out and just the moment of solemnity when the hearse went by in the circle here was just so powerful. It was just a beautiful moment. Absolutely, Jim. Tell us what you thought. Uh, did you expect this to be uh, as big a, of, a, of an event as it was? Uh, no, it was. It's overwhelming, and to see all the, the school children and, and people come out, that's just uh, very, very impressive. Uh, it, it really is uh, an honor to the Archbishop. Jim and Mary Kane here from Los Angeles uh, came in a few days earlier just because they wanted to be a part of this uh, momentous occasion out here. Things have pretty much cleared up here at. Uh, uh, at Notre Dame Seminary earlier today certainly was a frenzy of activity as people wanted to take their final moments as he was laying in repose here. Uh, just a touchy moment as we send uh, Archbishop Hannon on his homegoing service, Norman. It was a touching moment um, from the very start, um, from the mass this morning to the loading of his body into the, um, the um, 18th century horse-drawn hearse. It was a touching moment. And we, we forgot to mention, Gina, and I just remembered that, uh, that the services this morning, the mass, the final mass at, uh, at the place that was home to the Archbishop for so many years was officiated by former Archbishop Alfred Hughes this morning, who is riding along in that uh, funeral procession as we look at live pictures now of uh, St. Louis Cathedral, where the um, Archbishop, the former Archbishop's body will lie in repose until the funeral mass tomorrow afternoon. They are preparing now to receive his body, which will um, be open for review until 9 p.m. tonight and again from 9 a.m. until noon tomorrow. This is Carrollton at Canal where the possession has finally made its way. Uh, you'll see a, a cadre of New Orleans police motorcycles uh, leading the procession. In front of them um, was the uh, mounted police from the New Orleans Police Department. Behind them is the honor guard, the color guard. Um, by the sheriff's office and uh, and several other law enforcement agencies in this corte cortege, which features not only NOPD but Jefferson Parish um, detectives and and sheriff's office personnel, but uh, the Orleans Parish Sheriff's Office as as well, um, among others. Uh, this is a um, a day that will go down in history in the city of New Orleans. 
We haven't seen this in 47 years. The last um, Archbishop to be buried here was Archbishop Rummel. And the difference between this cortege and, and Archbishop Rummel's cortege, there were 17 uh, limousines um, carrying the um, family members and clergy. This um, particular cortege is more uh, akin to the New Orleans culture in that it has a horse-drawn 18th century carriage and uh, many walkers, among them the Archbishop Gregory Heyman, um, Bishop uh, Fabre, and uh, um, members of the Archbishop's family, the former Archbishop's family, the younger members, of course. This is a four and a half mile jaunt or walk from the um, Notre Dame Seminary down to um, Canal Street. On my right side, on your, the right side of your television screen, you can see the cortege. On the left side of your screen, you can see people along Canal Street waiting for the arrival of the cortege. We're told that uh, it should arrive in Jackson Square uh, by 3.30 or 4 o'clock this afternoon where the uh, former archbishop will lie in repose. Of course, this is a look at historic uh, Jackson Square. You can see the cathedral, the steeple for the cathedral in your picture. Now you can see more children filing, more students filing into the cathedral. Let's go to Rachel Wolf, who's standing by uh, in Jackson Square. Rachel? Hi, Norman. Joining me right now is Sarah Kaminsky. She is with the Archdiocese. And tell me, this is a monumental day, and it is a day that will go on down in history for a lot of these young Catholics who are experiencing something of this great epic proportion for the very first time. Oh, yes. The last time we buried an archbishop in New Orleans was 1960s. So this has been a very long time. Archbishop Hannon, and then followed by Archbishop Schulte, and Archbishop Hughes, and now Archbishop Amon. We've had four living archbishops. So this is something that's very historic, and we have a lot of Catholic school participation along the procession today here at the cathedral. And even at the seminary today, we had 300 students from Archbishop Hannon High School come and pay their last respects to Archbishop Hannon while he lied and reposed there. So we have some of the school children are going in and out of St. Louis Cathedral, what are they doing inside? Well, right now they're actually uh, saying that a couple of students from St. Dominic's, not a couple, a lot actually, they're in there uh, praying, rose, praying the rosary, um, some silent reflection time. It's very respectful, they are being very respectful, and it, it's a testament to Catholic schools that, in Catholic education, that they are there and taking the time to really be silent in the church and in this historic cathedral for this historic day. And there are thousands of people lining the streets. Not a surprise for you folks. How much planning did this take? I mean, you guys were, I know you were ready. He was ill for quite some time. But what did it take to put together an event like today? Well, you know, Archbishop Hannon may have, may have been ill, but he has lived such a long and full life. And he's always... Um, you know, for lack of a better word, rallied. We've had, you know, uh, he's an amazing man who's done so much. And even though we were sort of prepared, there were preliminary plans, this was a monumental task for Archbishop Amon and the Special Events Committee and all of those who were involved in planning the Mass and all the services leading up to it. So I don't know if you know the answer to this question, but did Archbishop Hannon have any special requests knowing that this day would once come in terms of the procedure or the procession? You know, I'm not aware of any particulars that he requested for the actual funeral service. That would be a question Archbishop Amon would definitely be able to answer for you later today. But um, the one thing that he said and we were able to accomplish was he wanted to die in the bed that he was born in. And while it wasn't the exact setup that he probably had in mind, he was very happy to know that that bed that he was born in, all his brothers and sisters were born in, was there with him in, in his room as he passed. Surrounded by family, if you will, very symbolic. And of course, we had St. Og's Marching 100 leading the way, which That's we know right. he was uh, a big fan of the music and the culture of New Orleans and really embraced it. And that is really, again, symbolic of New Orleans to have a band like that leading the way. And brings a bit of, of jo joviality, I guess you would say, fun to this very solemn, solemn occasion. It, it is a solemn occasion, but we are it's a celebration of life. And, you know, Archbishop Hannon lived a life that anyone could envy. Uh, I mean, from his time in World War II, he was actually there as a child when they broke ground on the National Basilica in Washington, D.C. So he's seen so much. He lived a life he'd want people to be celebrating. And as Archbishop Amon said, he's a true New Orleanian. He is. He is. He didn't want, he didn't want to go back to D.C. I asked his family about that. He said, no, I'm staying right here. We know that when he is buried that uh, he will be wearing certain vestments, um, the mitre and then the pallium. And we know the pastoral staff 
But let's talk about those New Orleans Saints cufflinks for a second here. <laughs> We've got a lot of Saints fans. Yes. Was that something he had ever inquired about, or was this sort of a surprise gift? The Bensons are, have always been very close with Archbishop Hannon, and uh, Mrs. Benson had a special relationship with him as a parishioner of the cathedral for many, many years. And so um, when this came about, when he, when he passed away, the Bensons called Archbishop Amon and said, we, we want him to have something of the Saints to take with him. And so they made that gift of the cufflinks, and I'm sure he's smiling down <laughs> that he has those <laughs> with him to go forever. A lot of people very envious, but a very, very gracious gift, and yes. we appreciate that. Well, thank you again for all information Welcome. and we'll be talking with you more throughout the day Great. Sarah Comiskey with thanks the Archdiocese no problem so again things starting to ramp up a few more people starting to fill Jackson Square and let me just speak briefly about tomorrow I know we're focused on four o'clock here when his body is supposed to arrive but there will actually be a funeral mass as we know tomorrow and, and what Sarah is telling me is there will be 300 seats inside Jackson Square so that will be like stadium type seating it's not set up right now it'll be set up tomorrow morning so if you come down here and you would like to get a seat it's first come first serve. There will also be a communion mass as part of that funeral procession. So what we know is that anybody who gets in those seats will get a host and actually be a part of that communion mass. So right now what you're seeing are some more Catholic school children arriving here at St. Louis Cathedral. Um, some of the classes and uh, again different parish leaders from across the New Orleans area coming to pay their last respects and again to be part of this very historic occasion here in New Orleans. Norman? Uh, Rachel, you, you talked about some very important uh, points as it relates to the, the Archbishop's um, association with the New Orleans Saints. He was an avid fan. As a child, he grew up uh, being a baseball fan with the Washington Senators, but uh, when he came to New Orleans, he, uh, he converted to a, 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 a diehard Saints fan. In fact, he <laughs> delivered the first, he, he delivered the um, invocation at the first Saints game back in 1967. Um, he was a f he, he he did become great friends with uh, with uh, Saints owner Tom Benson, and of course, he was friends with um, Benson's the lady who would become Benson's wife. Her name was was Gail Bird at the time. She was one of the lecterns at St. Louis Cathedral, and, and as a matter of fact, that's where Tom Benson met her. He he was a, as a devout Catholic, he would would attend mass at St. Louis Cathedral, which you're looking uh, uh, taking a live picture. Um, you're looking at a live picture of St. Louis Cathedral now, but uh, Tom Winston's, Benson's wife, Gail, was a lectern at, uh, at St. Louis Cathedral, and Tom Benson, attending Mass one day, um, asked who she was and inquired and was later introduced to her, and, and uh, the rest is history. Now she is Mrs. Gail Bird uh, uh, Benson. So no, no, the, the no. fact that they gave uh, the Archbishop a pair of New Orleans Saints cuff links comes as, as no surprise, as that, uh, no surprise as they were uh, very, like very close to each other. This is the St. Uh, Augustine Band. Let's see if we can hear what they're playing.
St. Augustine High School Marching 100, uh, although it would be more accurate to call them 180. Uh, the term 100 is a symbolic term uh, that goes back um, decades ago, but uh, they now field 180. And this band was specially requested by the um, current Archbishop, Gregory Amon, because of its relationship with the, uh, with the late Archbishop, Philip Hannon. Philip Hannon, during his, um, during his tenure as Archbishop of New Orleans, would annually talk to the um, graduating seniors at St. Augustine High School. He was their symbolic godfather, and, and it was something that he looked forward to. It was a, a special relationship that, uh, that, uh, that he uh, fostered because he felt that it was important to bring the community together and I just wanted to tell you that um, that was one of the particular things that he that he founded and funded under the uh, the auspices of Catholic Charities the the Archbishop secured funding for many of those programs and uh, beginning with the in the earliest days of his assignment as you look at this live exclusive picture of WDSU's uh, live camera which is leading the uh, the procession you can see the horse drawn um, hearse 18th century hearse a black hearse uh, with uh, being being uh, pulled by four white plumed horses and back to the Archbishop's um, uh, service of humanity. He wanted to unite this community. He saw the the integration of the uh, New Orleans area, and uh, he was um, walking through the Desire Housing Project. Um, there is the the, the hearse um, being drawn by those those specially outfitted horses, um, being flanked on both sides by the uh, the priests who uh, were um, among those who helped administer the uh, final mass at the Notre Dame Seminary this morning at, um, at, 11, at 11 a.m., which, I, which I, I might note had, uh, was attended by an overflowing crowd of people, both Catholic um, and uh, non-Catholic. But I did want to say that uh, the Archbishop was, uh, was very um, popular for his um, position of uniting the community. He was a uniter. He was a man who, who believed that, uh, that the power of humanity was best expressed through love and service. We thank you for joining us for our special coverage, remembering Archbishop Philip Hannon. And just as a, as a reminder, today today's episode of Anderson Cooper will air at 1.05 a.m. Until 4 o'clock, when we will have more on the uh, cortege or remembering Archbishop Hannon. This is Norman Robinson from the WDSU newsroom saying good afternoon. Something has changed in Louisiana. Something big. Something that hasn't happened in generations. A new station has become Louisiana's news leader at 4, at 5, and at 6. And that station is WDSU. The station that's on your side every weekday afternoon and evening with your first look at the day's developing stories, breaking news, and weather. WDSU News, Louisiana's new news leader. I see a lot of car wrecks in here. So when I got hurt, my customer said to call Morris Bart. So I made one call. Problem solved. I'm attorney Morris Bart. Hurt in a car wreck? Call 525-8000 right now. Let me go to work for you to get the money you deserve. My older sister was always the smart one in high school. But all that book study just wasn't for me. Then I found a place to fit in. Blue Cliff College. It's more hands-on training. Exactly what I needed. Now I'm a dialysis technician, and I love it. I work with patients who need dialysis because their kidneys no longer function. If I can change my life, you can too. Call Blue Cliff College at 888-350-8702. Day and evening classes available. Call now. Don't paint, don't find no go Rhino Shield. Never paint your house again. Rhino Shield. Imagine if the next time you painted your home was the last time you painted your home. Rhino Shield is a revolutionary permanent ceramic coating that comes with a 25 year warranty. Rhino Shield is a great alternative to traditional painting, hardy board, and vinyl. It won't chip, flake, mold, or mildew, and it's 100% maintenance free. It's more affordable than you think, and you'll never have to paint again. Rhino Shield! From corrections to communications, from patrolman to platoon commander to detective, 
From sergeant to SWAT, from lieutenant to captain, to major to chief deputy. For 28 years, Chief Jimmy Pullman rose through the ranks. Now he's ready to bring his courage and command to the job of sheriff. If you want the best person to do the top job, then elect someone who's done them all. Chief Jimmy Pullman, sheriff for a safe St. Bernard. No matter where you live, enjoy a New Orleans original daiquiri. New Orleans original daiquiris, serving fun for over 25 years. The original! New Orleans original daiquiri. <laughs> hey, bartender, what'd you learn in school? I learned a red snapper, kamikaze, long island ice tea. As a graduate from Crescent School of Gaming and Bartending, I now have the knowledge and the skills to achieve my goals in the hospitality industry. Take them all on the rocks with a twist. There's a school to attend that I highly recommend. Call 1-800-BARTEN. Ask any of Crescent School's graduates across the USA. Call Crescent School of Gaming and Bartending today. 1-800-BARTEN. Join the fun. In the route for the late Archbishop Philip Hannon as he made his way to his final resting place. We take you there live. And amid criminal charges, Plaquemines Parish Sheriff Jeff Hingle resigns. We have details on this I-Team investigation. From Louisiana's new news leader, this is WDS News at 4. Archbishop Philip Hannon is a step closer to his final resting place at St. Louis Cathedral. Today, a procession started at Notre Dame Seminary. Part of that procession were clergy members, the St. Augustine Marching 100 and Catholic School children. We have team coverage of today's procession. We're at the Notre Dame Seminary where the procession began. And we're live at St. Louis Cathedral where mourners can continue to pay their final respects. But we begin now with WDSU reporter Gina Swanson, who is live at the seminary. Gina. That's right, Scott. It's been three days of thousands of people coming to pay their final respects here at Notre Dame Seminary to Archbishop Philip Hannon, the 11th Archbishop of the Archdiocese of New Orleans. And today was no different. Earlier today, a flurry of people came in uh, before 1 o'clock. That's when the visitation here was closed. Promptly at 2 o'clock, we did see the clergy file out of the church, followed by the casket of Archbishop Philip Hannon. It was loaded into an antique carriage pulled by white horses horses, certainly a spectacle. As you mentioned, thousands of people did line the streets, including Catholic school children, about 7,000 students uh, uh, in Catholic schools. Also, students from Xavier University. We had students from his namesake high school, Archbishop Hannon. They stood here and sang the, and sang the alma mater in tribute to him. But one of the uh, more upbeat moments, if you will, was the St. Augustine Marching 100. You know, Archbishop Gregory Amen said that he didn't want this processional to be somber. He wanted it to be upbeat and full of life, just like Archbishop Philip Hannon. Well, at last check, the procession was right at Rampart, making its way to the St. Louis Cathedral, and that is where my colleague, WGSU Rach anchor Rachel Wills, is now. Rachel. Thanks so much, Gina. We are here at Jackson Square, where the festivities are starting to ramp up. Everybody ready to celebrate Archbishop Philip Hannon's life. And take a look behind me. This is the Korean Catholic Church dressed here in blue. They've come to celebrate this event and we also have some school children actually uh, on the other side over here and there are really hundreds of kids here today and uh, they're dressed in their finest wanting to be a part of the big event here today. So it's very important that the kids who are here today understand what today is all about and joining me right now is Sister Mary Sheila and those are some of your kids and you're with which school yes, again? Yes, we're at Cathedral Academy so it's the school that goes with St. Louis Cathedral and this is a big day for us because St. Louis Cathedral is the center of the French Quarter in the center of the city of New Orleans and a cathedral means the seat of the bishop, the archbishop. So Archbishop Hannon was really the pastor for our school, Cathedral Academy, and we're blessed to be a part of his life and the celebration of his life today. Well, I'm sure all the youngsters have been studying the bishops and everything like that. What does it mean watching them experience this through your eyes? It's a joy. I know Archbishop Hannon really loved the poor and really loved education. So we're, we're we're privileged to be here. Our sisters, we're Dominican sisters from Nashville, Tennessee, serving here in the French Quarter at Cathedral Academy to serve the poor and to teach them like Archbishop Hannon wanted us to. It's obviously an emotional day. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us today. And we look forward to speaking with you more, Sister Mary Sheila. So again, thousands of people expected to be here and we're hoping maybe in the next 15 or 20 minutes for that procession to arrive here. Live on your side in Jackson Square, Rachel Wolf, WDSU News. 
Rachel, thanks. Tomorrow, Archbishop Hannon will be laid to rest beneath the floor of the St. Louis Cathedral. We will carry the funeral mass live right here on WDSU and on WDSU.com. It begins at 2 p.m. Camille? Well, it is a story that... And this is another live look at the funeral procession for Archbishop Philip Hannon. The procession is arriving at St. Louis Cathedral as we speak. You can see the escort um, in front of the Archbishop uh, being taken up to the cathedral where, of course, he will be buried beneath the floor of the cathedral on Thursday, but he will lie in repose for a little while longer at the cathedral as uh, we approach that day. So we will continue to watch this picture, and as the Archbishop approaches uh, St. Louis Cathedral, we'll bring that back to you once again. And you can see the streets there lined with people waiting just to get a glimpse. So stay with us, everybody, and we'll have more on this when we come back. If you're going to pay your respects to Archbishop Hannon, you'll want to obey the parking rules. We'll tell you all about it when we come back. We got to get a new car for Amy. Just because you're new parents doesn't mean you can't look cool. 18 yeah. van, that would be so safe for Amy. That thing could take machine gun fire. This here was a horrible call. A new up all night, tonight at 8, 7 central on NBC. Tonight, two new twisted cases. I'm going to be sentenced to death. And two women who tell it like it is. You and your office have lost your nerve. New Harry's Law and new SVU, tonight on NBC. If you're enrolled in Medicare, odds are that your plan offers few extra benefits. Well, welcome to Windsor Sterling, a new partnership of Medicare plans bringing you more. Call today and we'll send you the latest edition of the Social Security Guide to Medicare updated for 2012, plus our plan comparison guide. At Windsor Sterling, we provide you with affordable coverage for the care you need. Depending on where you live, our plans offer broad access to care or a network of credentialed doctors and hospitals. Our benefits are designed to save you money and keep you healthy. This means helping with out-of-pocket costs for care while offering such benefits as dental, vision, fitness, and over-the-counter health and wellness products, depending on your plan. We'll even send you timely, personalized reminders about the checkups and screenings you need. Expect more and get extra from Windsor Sterling. Call today for your free guide at 1-877-230-1798. There is one word that describes Chris Kiefer, achiever. In high school, he received leadership awards in both academics and athletics. He excelled in law school, receiving the highest grade in numerous courses. He made law review, the national dean's list, was named who's who in American law students, graduated cum laude, and now he's recognized as one of the top attorneys in New Orleans. Chris Kiefer, judge. Your time now, 421. We're taking a live look right now at Archbishop Hannon's funeral procession. The carriage is just a few moments away. The funeral procession started this afternoon at about 2 o'clock. It started at Notre Dame Seminary, and now the procession is ending up and it's finishing at St. Louis Cathedral. The late Archbishop will be laid to rest yes. tomorrow yes. in the floor of the altar there. Of course, we want you to stay tuned and stay with us here at WDSU News at 4 o'clock. We will be live with all the uh, ceremony and all of the services not only for the remainder of what's happening today, but of course, again, tomorrow as well. You can see hundreds, maybe perhaps even thousands of people have lined the street all the way from the seminary today and to where you see them right now at the St. Louis Cathedral. Of course, we have live crews all over the scene, and right now we want to go to WDSU reporter Rachel Wolf, who is there live with the very latest. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Camille. Actually, that funeral procession just heading up charters, as you can see behind me. We've already had the police escort. Now we have members of the military with the flags that they are going to present here today at St. Louis Cathedral. And behind them, of course, we know is St. Saint Mar Saint Marching 100 leading the way. And then, of course, we will have the body of Archbishop Philip Hanna. Now, we know that there are a number of dignitaries, members of the Catholic Church. Um, you can hear the, the bells tolling here at St. Louis Cathedral. And also all of the children, thousands of Catholic school kids lining the, 
the streets here of New Orleans, greeting the body of Archbishop Philip Hannon. This is a monumental occasion. He will be the 12th bishop to be buried here at St. Louis Cathedral. This is an auspicious occasion, a solemn occasion, and a time of change. This is a changing of the God, even though we've already turned things over to Archbishop Gregory Amon, many folks here really wanting to be a part of a really significant piece of history. So here you see St. Augs Marching 100 marching here onto Jackson Square and the presentation of the colors. Again, we are live here outside St. Louis Cathedral. We've just had St. Augs Marching 100 pass us by, the presentation of the colors. We have thousands of people here taking pictures, sharing in this event, people awaiting the arrival, and here it is right now, the arrival of Archbishop Philip Hannon's body to St. Louis Cathedral. These are family members, certain dignitaries. We're told that that horse-drawn carriage is about a block away. At this point in time, again, the crowd anxiously awaiting the arrival 
Barge Bishop Philip Hannon. There's Archbishop Gregory Amond, other heads of the Catholic Church, arriving here in St. Louis Cathedral. <laughs> Being greeted by members of the Korean Catholic Church, Those, these are the folks in blue. In the distance, we are hearing the sound of bagpipes. On Monday, the bagpipes were played by the Hibernians at the public visitation at Notre Dame Seminary. Mounted police, and hopefully behind them, that horse-drawn carriage. <laughs> Thank you. 